Hey, welcome back uh, to our uh, Revit 2016 series. Okay, um, in this video we're going to um, add um, something called a building pad. Okay, and um, this is a um, basically a type of effectively a type of floor that um, interacts with an existing topo surface. Okay, so um, I'll show you um, probably a little, little example of it out in the open so we can see it clearly working there and then I'll show you, um, we'll, we'll build the example as relates to this lab. At the same time we'll go also um, or may or may not, um, we, need, we, need, we need to look at some of the restrictions um, of the building pad, certainly with regards to um, uh, Australian architecture and especially the brick veneer wall. Um, but anyway, let's let's get cracking into it. Okay, so um, just gonna have a double check. I'm just gonna look on the left-hand side. There's a site plan. Actually, no, I'm gonna go back to my ground floor plan. Okay, we'll do it from here. Okay, so the building pad, even though it is a type of floor, um, it's actually completed, um, we work on it in the massing and site tab. Okay, so if we need to go into there. Now, if you're using Revit LT, you won't have massing, but you will have a site tab. Okay, and on the right hand side, these are all our site tools. Okay, and in there, in the model site side of things, we've got this... Um, um, icon here for building pad okay and um, then basically this building pad just basically flat surface initially by default and it um, yeah it can cut and fill directly with the topo surface um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay in my ground floor plan okay so I'm just going to build a very simple one out in the open and have a quick look at it so I'm just going to go left click on the building pad icon there uh, we're taken into sketch mode here, okay. I'm just going to grab a, um, just go to a rectangle and just very very quickly um, draw a you know little rectangle there, and um, I'm going to left click that to finish the sketch. Okay, now I'm in ground floor plan. Don't to be too stressed. We can't see it right now because in 3D is where we're really going to see this happening. Okay, so I'm going to left click, and um, there it is. Okay, so this building pad has been constructed at ground floor level. Okay, and as you can see, it cuts. It's cut into the topo surface because the topo surface is um, the ground is higher than the ground floor level at this point. Okay, and to to emphasise that, if I can uh, hover over there and pick that edge there where it says pads. Yeah, I've got pad one there. If I left click on that go into my properties one there, here and if I say I've got my height offset here which means I can change the the nature of the the level um, or where the pad, any, uh, the building pad will sit even though I'm still related to the ground floor so if I take a stab at say about 600, 600 millimeters vertical offset and apply it there we go so you can see that the building pad has there it is there it has now gone over the topo surface but it has taken that top topo surface with it okay so it's a cut and fill um, mechanism okay so I'm just going to click on that one there and I'm just going to delete it okay now I'm just going to go back to my ground floor plan okay and um, so what we're going to do is we're going to build the a top we're build two topo surf um, two building pads could do one all the way around the edge of the house okay and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to build another one probably around out here cut to around about 50 millimeters lower than the ground floor okay obviously for drainage um, requirements okay so um, back into our building pad uh, tool there okay and uh, I might just use my line tool very quickly this time because I've got the walls already there, I can very quickly snap. So left key, 
looking for my endpoint snaps there. Um, if you ever get to a corner where you might be struggling to find a snap, if I type in the letter S, okay, then E, E for end snap, that's going to snap exactly where I want it to go as well. Okay, two, and there's that last bit there. Okay, and finish the job. Now we don't see an awful lot of a change there. Okay, until we go into maybe 3D. Okay, 3D, there we go. We can see it on the edge here. There's our building pad there. Okay. Alrighty ho. So that's that part there. Not overly exciting, I'll be honest. But important nonetheless. Okay, now the next one we want to do is, like I said, I'm going to do another building pad out here, so I'm going to just create some sort of, you know, alfresco effect or something. Okay, <coughs> so I'm going to go back to my tool here, building pad tool. Okay, going to go to my properties on the left hand side, and I'm going to offset now minus 50. Okay, so we're going to drop it down 50 millimeters, you know, one sort of reasonable step. Okay, and now I'm just going to... Again, left click, um, uh, let's, I don't know, let's try about 5 metres there, um, something like this anyway, yeah, just some sort of L shaped thing, so people can step, step down out of the living room here, they can step down out of dining here, and they're going to have a nice solid concrete surface. Okay, now I'm just going to go left click. Actually, before we do that, we'll just go and quickly look at this edit, the, the pad type. So we'll just go have a look at its, at its properties there. So we'll go edit type. Okay. Yeah, what information do they give us? So this is the type property. So this is how this pad one's going to behave each and every time. Okay, so at the moment we've got a, um, a structure. Um, if I click on edit, um, at the moment it's just set on a default. Um, and it's got a thickness of 304.8 millimeters. So again, I'm guessing that this is some conversion from um, imperial um, uh, metric um, conversion from an imperial measurement. Um, uh, but yeah, there we go. We've got this material here. So I'm not going to change anything here. Um, We've got some graphics um, information there, some analytical properties. So it's not a huge amount that it tells us there. So, but it is good to sort of know that we can go in there. Righty ho! And now I'm just going to draw it my shape. Now I'm just going to left click, okay, the tick, or the check mark, um, to complete the sketch. Now I'm going to jump into 3D. Okay, and there it, there it is. Okay. So as you can see, it's the the house is quite a bit ground floor there is quite a bit lower than the soil there. So this would this would be a design issue, okay? And this is something that would need to be um, considered, you know, by the designer or the architect as to how to to deal with this, okay? The beauty is is that Revit very quickly helps us understand that these are, you know, we can visualize these issues um, very quickly. Okay, so something like this, you know, we could see down this side here. Okay, there's my laundry door, there's my dirt, but there's my ground floor there. So, you know, my brain's already ticking over thinking, well, we probably should be cutting down here. Uh, we might need a retaining wall down here somewhere, you know, all this sort of range. And we're obviously, we've got some landscaping to consider down the track. Okay. Alrighty ho. Now one little thing before we finish this um, particular video. Okay, um, up to now I've been operating in um, uh, what we call hidden lines visual style. Okay, which is basically like a drafting style, black and white view. Okay, but the the, the building has gone to a stage now that it's um, a little bit cumbersome to look at. You know, it's a bit boring. Okay, so let's lighten the mood a little bit. Okay, so let's get some colour into this. Okay, so just follow my cursor, there we are, down, 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 bottom left down, corner down here, so these are all my visual um, c controls, okay, scale, uh, detail level, and then we've got the here, which is my visual styles, okay, and if you look over there, see it says hidden line, if I left click here, 
Okay, these are all the different visual styles that we have. Okay, we're not going to go through all of them, but the one we want right now that I use a lot um, is called Consistent Colors. So I'm just going to left click on that, and ta-da, there we go. So what what Consistent Colors does is that it gives us a, a nice sort of solid color. Okay, we still get to see some hatching, um, but there's no shading. Okay, and, and shading severely um, impedes on the computer's ability because um, it's you know it's starting to use this you know um, shading and shadows requires the CPU to do some rendering. Okay, whereas consistent colors we at least get a, 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 some visual cues and a, you know it helps us understand what's going on. Okay, right here. So we're going to leave it at that. Okay, um, in the next uh, video again we might. Now we're doing a floor here. Okay, we um, might do a floor up here as well for the upper floor. But we'll um, we'll see how I go and see what my my brain tells me to do. Um, also, just as a final final thing before we go, um, thank you to all of those who who have um, been sub been subscribing to my videos. It's um, much appreciated. Um, I d I don't know how. Um, what would happen when I started doing these videos, but um, it seems to be catching on. I've had a few, got a few subscribers now, which is nice, and so I do. I, I really appreciate um, you doing this, and um, please feel free to um, tell your buddies, um, shoot me questions. Um, as I said, um, more than happy to, to help you out. And if anybody does have a you know a special video that they would like or has a question, give me a buzz. I will. Um, I said, if, if I can, I, I will certainly endeavour to, to, to help you. Um, I really enjoy doing what I'm doing, and um, yes, nice to nice to have some people watching what I do do. So um, we will see you later.